The Parisian home of Can Can and Cabaret clocks up 130 years in the business. An artist who stands out by blending in and a gesture of friendship from Jeff Koons. That's all coming up in today's show. We're kicking off the programme at a legendary venue that came to sum up the more risque side of Belle Epoque Paris. The Moulin Rouge is celebrating its 130th birthday and over the years the likes of Edith Piaf, Liza Minnelli and Frank Sinatra have all performed on its famous stage. Today it's still a thriving business attracting 600,000 people a year to its shows. Every night, a spectacular vision of the City of Lights comes to life in the Fairy Show in a burst of colours, feathers and glitter. Eve Jackson went backstage at the Moulin Rouge to bring us this report. Welcome to the most famous cabaret in the world. Every night, the show called Fairy takes to the stage. A troupe of 60 dancers recruited worldwide of 14 different nationalities. A thousand feather costumes hand-sewn with rhinestones and sequins made in the most famous Parisian workshops. The highlight, Moulin Rouge's most iconic dance, the French Cancan. Lovely it's really to meet nice you. to meet you. I'm Gabby. So Gabby, how long have you been working at the Moulin Rouge? It's been about three years now, just over three years. And how did you end up here? Because you're from California originally. Yeah, well, I was living in New York and I saw they were having auditions in Montreal because they do auditions all over the world to get talent. And I just took the train and just did the audition and it went well. And then I moved here, <laughs> just kind of knowing no French or anything. And but. what's it like working in such a legendary place? Oh, I feel so privileged to work here. It's such a treat. It's, you can't find a better job as a dancer, really. It's, it's such a gift to be able to like be a part of such a legacy and to perform for a full audience every night. I feel really lucky. And how many costume changes do you do a night? We do 12 a night. We have a ton of costumes. We have 1,000 costumes and 800 pairs of shoes. It's a huge production, so we're constantly changing costumes. There's cho like choreography backstage as well as on stage. With all the quick changes. The record-breaking fairy show has won the applause of more than 12 million spectators from across the world since it was first created in 1999. It's performed twice a night, every day of the year. Like all of the shows at the Moulin Rouge, its title begins with the letter F, a tribute and tradition coming after the very first show, Fru Fru, in 1963. And so how do you prepare for the show every night? We, the two shows every night. Yeah, we definitely have to warm up. You have to keep um, good track of your body because we're working so hard. We work six days a week, so you have to make sure you warm up appropriately. Some girls go to the gym and do a bit of a run. I always stretch, especially by the time you get to Can Can, you have to kick your legs really high, so you don't want to get injured. So what's the hardest part or the most challenging part of the show for you? Definitely the Can Can, for sure. You have to do jump splits and kick your legs, and it's really fast, and you're doing cartwheels. But um, I think it's the most fun to perform. You get to scream and just go wild and have fun. I love it. Can you show me one of the hard things, one of the most challenging things? One of the most challenging things? Well, I would say a jump split is pretty okay, scary. I'm stand back. It looks scary. It sounds scary. <laughs> but once you learn, it's fine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> The Moulin Rouge has spanned the ages, including two world wars and a devastating fire in 1915, always changing with the times. Stage director Thierry Utria has been here for more than 40 years. The Moulin Rouge is a symbol of women's emancipation. As soon as they started dancing the cancan, women were able to lift their skirts. They wanted to break free. There were dance moves such as the cathedral, where they made fun of the clergy, of the church, by imitating the shape of the front porch, with their legs up high. When they do the military salute, they mock the army. They lift their leg high and mimic the military salute as they walk backwards and twirl. 
And when they show their buttocks, when they lift their skirts, it's called the moon strike. They're saying, we're showing you something that is ours. Same thing when they do the splits, they do a jump split. They're basically saying, we own our bodies. And at the time, that was highly provocative. They're militants, they fought for freedom, and that's fantastic. And every night, there are over 45 of them on stage, and people come from all over the world to cheer for them. So they won. Happy 130th birthday, Moulin Rouge, with more than 600,000 visitors a year. Your sales will surely keep turning for many more to come. Staying here in Paris, the city's unveiling a new piece of public art this week called the Bouquet of Tulips. Artist Jeff Koons has donated the sculpture as an homage to those who died here in the terror attacks of 2015. Announced three years ago, the piece has stirred up some controversy, with figures from the world of arts and politics signing a petition against the sculpture, saying the city had no say in where it was to be placed, nor in the nature of the work. In the end, the bouquet of tulips will be located in a garden of the Petit Palais near the River Seine. And Jeff Kuhn spoke to France 24 when he sketched out plans for the project. So here's more from him. It's a work that really uh, tries to celebrate the, the relationships, the values that Americans and the French hold dear of uh, liberty and freedom and uh, show uh, solidarity and to show an offering of uh, remembrance to the victims of uh, the terrible uh, tragedies that have happened in uh, France over the last two years. And uh, at the same time, to uh, give hope to the, uh, uh, the surviving family uh, members. Well, next, we've been catching up with an artist who's not always easy to pick out from the crowd. Liu Bolin is often hiding in plain sight as the Chinese painter melts into his own work. His most recent performance is called Hiding on the 38RG Parallel Nought, or The Invisible Man in North Korea. That extraordinary work's on show at the Paris-Beijing Gallery, and France 24's Lucie Barbazange went along to meet him. Can you find him? Sure, right here. For this performance piece, Liu Bolin played a daring game of cat and mouse in the heart of the North Korean dictatorship. He picked seven locations, out of those the regime allowed him to go to, he chose propaganda images in which he concealed himself thanks to the clever use of some paint. This is a local North Korean theater, and you can see the posters for the plays being performed or coming up. They remind me of my childhood, of the covers of books I used to read as a child back in China. Almost all of them look like the book covers I remember. It may seem as though Liu Bolin is siding with the North Korean regime. In truth, his goal is to expose images that are actually staged. For instance, this photo. The local supermarket seems plentiful, whereas in reality, only foreign tourists are allowed access to it. The expo is also a chance to see the latest works from the man often called the chameleon artist. This is his 13th show in France. France is my lucky charm. I've taken as many photos here as in Beijing. My first one-man show was in Paris in 2005. My professor worked at the fine arts school here, so my ways of creating my inspirations are closely linked with Paris. The attack at the headquarters of Charlie Hebdo had a profound impact on the Chinese artist. Charlie Hebdo happened on the 7th of January 2015, which is also my birthday. Ever since, my birthday just doesn't feel a joyous occasion for me. 
In all my work, you can feel there is a sense of anxiety and apprehension about death. Through his art, Liu Bolin's goal is to provide food for thought on whether we have as much free thinking as we think we do. Well, we're wrapping up the show with someone who was no stranger to the Moulin Rouge and the Montmartre neighbourhood, Toulouse-Lautrec. The artist's work is now on show at the Grand Palais here in the French capital, a selection of paintings, drawings and illustration which go beyond the Parisian nightlife he's known for and highlight the artist's powerful, poetic, naturalist style. We'll leave you with a glimpse of some of those pieces. Do remember to check out our website for more arts and culture and you can keep up with us on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this.